Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Delian. This is my partner, Hoja. We come from Bad Dance. Today, we are very delighted to have this opportunity to share our batch processing uh, to you. And since batch processing is a huge uh, topic, and we will focus on the scheduling, especially for the performance and the capabilities. Uh, the agenda, I will show you the agenda. First, I will have a intro, uh, brief introduction about our batch processing, uh, just about our view, overview, and we will focus on the problem with the Kubernetes native schedule, and uh, why do we develop a uh, bad dance unified scheduling to support all of our workload. We call it the schedule, a uh, good schedule. We will deep dive to the performance and the capabilities, and uh, including the evaluation. Uh, at last, we will uh, have a, a brief introduction about the future work and our open source. Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to have uh, show you the ecosystem. Any problem? Sorry for the technical difficulties. Settings again. Oh, all right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, settings. Uh, it's Sorry, set yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is our uh, batch scheduling ecosystem, and uh, I would I'd like to divide it into four layers. The first layer is the hardware hardware layer. We uh, manage a lot of the, what happened? <laughs> I think no display option, just go, go slow as this. Okay. Uh, okay, for the hardware layer, we use Kubernetes to manage a lot of different type of resources, including many uh, types of GPU, and we also uh, manage a lot of the CPUs, and we use HAM to reduce our costs. And we also focus on the network uh, bandwidth scheduling, since our training job and uh, costs consume a lot of the network bandwidth. And currently, we already use the Kubernetes to manage all of our resources and provide different abstraction to the workloads. Uh, we replace the coop schedule with our uh, unified schedule. We call it GERDA schedule. Uh, GERDA is famous, uh, is famous for mathematics and uh, who proposed an incomplete new theory, uh, which means that uh, if we want to, uh, want to develop a very, very uh, good uh, schedule, it's, uh, very, uh, we have a lot of challenge. And uh, for the framework, uh, we now have a lot of different framework uh, running on, on our Kubernetes, all which are supported by the uh, operator. Uh, we have the Spark for, for big data processing, and we use Flink to to support our uh, machine learning and big data stream processing. And we also run a lot of TensorFlow and PyTorch frameworks, and we also develop many uh, machine learning framework to achieve better accuracy. Uh, we, uh, we support a lot of business, including the recommendations, search advertisement, and neural network pro uh, process, and uh, compute vision. Uh, this slide, I want to address our, our, our large scale. Uh, today, we have more than one million jobs run, running every day. Uh, this is uh, uh, just for the uh, batch jobs. And since the batch job, especially for the Spark Circle, which uh, create a lot of ports, so we have more than uh, 130 million ports uh, created, uh, scheduled, and deleted every day, which uh, requires a lot of uh, a big challenge for the scheduling performance. And currently, our batch job consumes up to uh, 60 million CPU cores, and uh, our biggest cluster manage more than 20, uh, 20 thousand nodes. Since we do not uh, to manage a small cluster to increase the resource fragmentations, and most of our cluster are more than 5 thousand nodes. And this picture will have a, a brief evolution of our battery uh, processing. Uh, I like to divide it to three stages. The first stage uh, begins at uh, uh, about 2016. Uh, in the stage, I said nothing. 
uh, we build our online platform with Kubernetes, and we build our offline uh, platform with Hadoop. Yeah, uh, both the both two resource and managed system where share no share share no resources, and uh, each has a dedicated control plan and a dedicated cluster, and uh, the and uh, it has some problem. First, it's the resource fragmentations, and also the online service uh, uh, applied more uh, resources than, uh, than than the workload needs, and we also have a lot of resource waste during the off-peak traffic hours, especially for during the night. So we come to stage two, as about three years later, we, uh, we, we try to share the node between the Hadoop BI and the Kubernetes. Uh, in this, uh, how, to, uh, how to solve the complications, we uh, develop a coordinator uh, to solve the, the conflicts between the Kubernetes and the Hadoop BI. We will deploy the agent of Kubernetes and Hadoop BI in the same node. And uh, this uh, coordinator uh, will allocate the resource to Kubernetes agent and also allocation resource to the Hadoop BI. During the days, uh, the online workload consumes a lot of CPU, so uh, the coordinator will allocate more CPU to the Kubernetes, but during the net, uh, the coordinator will reclaim most of the CPU and uh, tell the node manager, uh, oh, I have resource, a lot of resource here, I please distribute more workload here. Yeah, at this stage, uh, we increased our CPU utilization a lot, and the, but it still has some problem. First one is the high operation costs, uh, since we need still to need to manage two uh, scheduling and uh, resource management system, and uh, the resource elasticity is still not undesirable since the control plane is still uh, we still have two different control plane. So uh, the year before last year, we come to uh, stage three. Uh, we use the Kubernetes to manage all of our resources and uh, no more hard to be yeah. And uh, since the, uh, the default schedule does not meet our requirements, we develop a bad dance unified schedule. And uh, we also uh, we and we and we also keep the coordinators. This is uh, some collocated uh, agent and I will have brief introduction at the end about the open source. And in this stage, we achieve high resource elasticity and utilization, and we also improve our operation efficiency. And uh, uh, this uh, this section, I want to address some problems with the native schedule. Uh, the first one is the scalability. Since we have more than uh, uh, 130 million posts start and uh, scheduling and delete every day. So uh, since the batch job, can, uh, so we care about the scalability a lot, but the, but the default schedule does, does the serious processing. So as the benchmark shows, in most cases, uh, the throughput is no more than 200 per second. The second thing I want to address is about the capabilities. Since the Kubernetes is designed, uh, was designed for the microservice first, it lacks some important capabilities for the batch processing. As we all know, uh, important is the uh, high performance gun scheduling. And we also care about uh, many, uh, many special features, such as the job level affinity, which means that I want to put all of the ports in the same train, train job to the same network switch to achieve bad, to achieve bad network uh, performance. And we also care about macro topology scheduling to improve the scheduling accuracy. And uh, uh, by the way, and the Kubernetes also lacks some capabilities for collocated workloads, such as some, uh, some sorting, domain resource fairness and priority based, and we also have some uh, sorting like the fair share. Uh, the last thing I want to address is about the preemption, especially we uh, collocated more all of our workload, our workload together, the, the preemption is very really complicated, very really, really complicated. Uh, for the next section, uh, please invite Hao Jia to share it. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks, Da Yang. So now we'll be talking a bit more about our scheduler. And uh, yeah, so we are, we, are, we are set to open source this uh, scheduler soon. Uh, and this is sort of like a preview of some of the features and capabilities and hopefully also sharing some of the considerations that we had or trying to build a scheduler for scale can provide some uh, useful insights for everyone. Yep. So before I dive into the details, uh, maybe you can talk about some of the goals that we had. So we wanted to create a high performance scheduler uh, with both support for online and offline scheduling capabilities. So this is to address the scale that I think Da Yang shared about earlier. 
Yep. So we also hope to use the scheduler to increase the resource utilization across our clusters and also unify both our online and offline resource pools to achieve uh, complete resource elasticity. Yep. So we believe the last two goals are the key to reducing costs within our company and achieving higher efficiency. Okay, so now I'll share some uh, interesting highlights of our uh, architecture. So actually, the Godot scheduler is designed as a distributed scheduling system. So uh, the Cube scheduler is actually a non-distributed one, and it, it runs with a single component. Yeah, but Godot actually consists of three separate components. So we have the dispatcher, the scheduler instances, and the binder. So this design actually allows us to scale the number of scheduler instances horizontally to achieve higher throughputs. Yep, but naturally, uh, having multiple scheduler instances running at the same time will lead to conflicts, right? So, uh, for example, you might have two scheduler instances. You know, without any shared state, they might choose to assign the last CPU on a node to two different ports. Yep, so this is where the binder comes in. The binder is in charge of conflict resolution uh, before actually writing the results back to the API server. Yep, so now let me talk about our scheduling framework. So we try to follow Kubernetes' scheduling framework as closely as possible. Uh, the difference is that um, we added a few stages and at the same time, uh, different stages are actually carried out in different components. So for Gerdo, the scheduling actually starts at the dispatcher and the dispatcher is in charge of watching ports on the API server and grouping them into groups which we call scheduling units. Yep, so uh, the dispatcher then sorts these requests, sorry, these uh, units uh, based on priority and sends uh, assigns them to dedicated scheduler instances. So the scheduler uh, is in charge of assigning the best node to each port within the scheduling unit and it does this by executing a filter and score stage so this is similar or the same as what is happening in the native cube scheduler. So additionally, uh, it also has a dedicated preemption stage where it suggests candidates for preemption. Yep. Uh, last but not least, we have the binder, and as mentioned previously, it's uh, the key to conflict resolution, giving us a form of optimistic concurrency control. Yep, so for scheduling decisions that pass the conflict resolution, it will actually execute the reserve and bind stages, and finally write the results back to the API server. It's also in charge of actually executing any preemptions if needed. Yep, so uh, yeah, now I'll highlight some of the performance features that we have to increase the scheduling throughput. So as mentioned, one of the goals uh, that we had for Gerda was to achieve higher throughput to meet our requirements. So Gerda supports concurrent scheduling. So I think this is pretty obvious by now. Uh, we can have multiple scheduler instances running at the same time, and the binder is in charge of resolving the conflicts uh, for the scheduling decisions. Yep. However, having more scheduler instances also results in higher chance for conflict so actually a balance is needed when scaling the number of scheduler instances. And in the addition, we also support node partitioning to reduce the chance of conflicts. So node partitioning is where each scheduler instance uh, is given a dedicated set of nodes to schedule to. And, but while this reduces the conflict, uh, there's also a trade-off because uh, you know, the best node might not be found within a single node partition. So we have a few other optimizations. Uh, one of them is also result caching. So actually, we, we, this is based on the fact that we've, we found that most ports within a workload actually share the same template and same requirements. So a feasible node that fits one port within a workload is likely to be suitable for others within the same workload. So during the filter stage, we actually cache uh, feasible nodes and this helps to speed up the filter stage as a whole yeah, by, repeating, by avoiding repeated computations. Yep, so now I'll move on to share some of the scheduling capabilities. Uh, we'll not go through all of them for the interest of time. So these scheduling capabilities are designed to help us to run our offline workloads on Kubernetes. So the first feature, and I think a very common requirement for batch processing schedulers, it's uh, gang scheduling. So in gang scheduling, uh, in the context of Gerdo, all ports within a single gang, uh, are scheduled, they are scheduled together with all nothing semantics. So this is important for scenarios like distributed learning, where maybe the absence of a port running the parameter server would block the progress of the whole job as a whole. Yep. So Godot supports this by not scheduling ports individually, but in scheduling units, like I mentioned previously. 
Uh, yeah, so this actually fills the semantic gap needed to support gang scheduling in Kubernetes. And the binder will actually take the necessary actions to ensure that all ports get binded together. Yep. So next, we also support some more complex uh, queuing semantics. So uh, when you have a lot of offline jobs uh, in a queue waiting to be run, I think uh, it's important to ensure that there's no starvation and there's fairness. So uh, while the native queue scheduler, I think it supports some uh, basic priority-based sorting, we actually implemented more sophisticated policies in our dispatcher, such as uh, domain resource fairness and fair share. Yeah, so yeah, uh, this is in order to help us to run our support the running of our offline workloads on Kubernetes. So next, we also have micro topology scheduling. So uh, batch and ML jobs are characterized by high I/O and frequent memory access. So uh, micro topology scheduling is where we schedule uh, CPU and memory from the same NUMA node to a single port, and this can actually improve the performance of our offline jobs. Yep. Uh, so this actually requires cooperation between the scheduler and also the kubelet or no agent. Yeah, so while the kubelet now supports uh, NUMA binding using topology manager, the native kube scheduler still lacks uh, support for micro topology scheduling. So we use a custom node agent that writes topology information as node annotations, and the Gurdle scheduler is able to process this information to make its scheduling decisions. Yep. Yeah, so we implemented a few other capabilities, which I will not go through uh, in the interest of time. And I think this has also been mentioned by Te Liang earlier. Yeah. So now I'll share a bit about the results that we achieved with the Gurdle Scheduler. So actually, um, we ran some benchmarks comparing uh, Kubernetes with a Gurdle Scheduler running a single scheduler instance. And with some of the optimizations that we have, uh, we actually managed to achieve a much higher scheduling throughput. And we can also take this a step further by scaling the number of scheduler instances. Uh, and it allows us to hit almost uh, 5,000 pods per second, as you can see here, when we run, run benchmarks on a 10,000 node cluster. Yep. So we've been running it in production for some time now. And we've managed to increase the resource utilization in our resources, uh, in our clusters, to up to 60%. We've managed to sustain a peak scheduling throughput of 5,000 pods per second, and we've also managed to unify our resource pools consisting of millions of cores. Yeah. So now we're coming to the end of the presentation. And I'll share a bit about some of the future work that we have in store for the Godot scheduler. So currently, transitory stages used by the different components are persisted in the API server in the form of pod annotations, etc. So we are planning on using an in-memory cache or in-memory database to store these stages, and we expect this to increase the performance of the Godot scheduler. We are also working on a Godot rescheduler, and its job is to take preemptive measures uh, by watching running pods and uh, carrying out actions to reduce resource fragmentation and contention, achieving higher quality of service for critical workloads. We're also developing an explainer and simulator to improve the explainability and visibility of our scheduling decisions. Yep. So yeah, we're planning to open source this soon. And actually in ByteDance, we have been working with Kubernetes for quite some time now and trying to scale it. And we have actually began to open source a lot of our projects and solutions uh, under this organization called KubeWolf. So, uh, for the Gala scheduler, we're also planning to open source this in the fourth quarter of this year under this organization. Yep. So do stay tuned for any updates. Yep. So we've come to the end of the sharing. And uh, yeah, to summarize, we shared about batch processing in ByteDance, why we decided to move them to Kubernetes, some of the problems that we faced, and why we wrote our own scheduler. Yep. So thank you so much. What were you using to gauge the performance between the two? Benchmark. Benchmark. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. So actually, we, we we ran the benchmarks in uh, test clusters, where we actually tried to saturate the number of uh, scheduling requests by creating pods within the cluster. And yeah, once we reached that saturation point, then we got the scheduling throughput. Yeah, and we compared the two. So yeah.
Hope that answers your question. So I have a question for the architecture part. So I saw the scheduler is parallel as then they are using a shared plan bender. So this one is working, uh, I mean the scheduler zero and n is working in different go routine or say they are different components as then communicate with each other, use some RPC or whatever. Oh no, actually they, 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 they write the, the transitory stages to the API server. So in the form of like annotations on ports and such, yeah. So yeah, there's no like direct communication between the components actually. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, hi, uh, how do you compare your scheduler with Volcano scheduler? It seems like they achieve similar <laughs> goals. <laughs> okay. Uh, in uh, honest speaking, uh, we uh, before we developed the good schedule, and uh, uh, it is, it's about two year, years ago, and uh, we test the coop schedule, including the coop schedule framework we too, and we also have a test about the volcano. Uh, but the most important is about the performance. Yeah, I think if if you manage your cluster with uh, from five thousand to uh, twenty thousand. Uh, you can have a benchmark about the volcano. <laughs> so sorry, uh, I, I could I could not uh, hear. <laughs> so. So is your scheduler also a Kubernetes uh, scheduler plugin or is like a, a, a separate scheduler running on uh, Kubernetes? Okay, uh, good question. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a separate, it's a separated uh, schedule which will replace the Kub schedule. Yeah. Uh, okay. we, we use the schedule to schedule all of our workloads. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Will will you release your like code in the Git repo? We can we can check. So okay. <laughs> okay, this is our this is our uh, open source uh, organization, and you can find some interesting open source uh, uh, in the organization. And uh, may, uh, please allow me to have uh, one minute to have a brief introduction. You say uh, we. Uh, we extend the Kubernetes from uh, 5,000 to uh, 20,000. Uh, the first thing we do is to replace the etcd CD, which is the first uh, uh, project, Kubernetes. We use a very strong key value consistent store to replace our etcd to achieve the, uh, to solve the, the first bone of the storage system. Yeah, and, uh, and you can see a catalyst call. This is a place also very important law in the node agent because this is our, our most important collocated uh, open source project, which uh, will solve the conflicts uh, between the online workload and the offline workload. It will also report a lot of the different uh, resources and different quality of service to, the, to, our, to our Kubernetes and the scheduler will collaborate with this to uh, achieve a better scheduling qualities. Uh, we'll close here for the next session. Thank you. Thank you for presentation.